Now we'll look at how to use cylindrical coordinates to do a triple integral. So let's first start with the volume element. Since any triple integral is going to be integrating a function over a region against the volume element. So we need to know what is the volume element in cylindrical coordinates. Now what this means is if we chop our region up that we're integrating over into tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces, in this case tiny little cylindrical boxes, then what is the volume of one of those tiny little cylindrical boxes? That would be the dv element or the volume element. So let's look at a visual for this. So here we've got a volume element shown in blue and you know it's not tiny tiny but we could just change the angle make the angle shrink between these two theta planes or we could shrink the r value by taking these concentric cylinders and shrinking them we could do these kinds of things I mean right now that would be sort of like shrinking everything to make that tiny volume element but I'm going to leave it a little bit bigger just so we can get a feel for what the volume is. So this, first of all, this is a cylindrical box. This blue region is trapped between two constant theta values. You can see those two red planes there. Those are two constant theta values. It's trapped between two constant R values. You can see the concentric cylinders sort of from that top down view so two R values, and two Z values, those are those green planes. So this is a cylindrical box, and we're interested in what is the volume of the cylindrical box. Well, the first thing to note is that the volume does depend on R. As R gets smaller, that blue region gets smaller. As R gets bigger, that blue volume gets bigger. So it's going to depend on R. Will it depend on theta? No, as theta changes, that region does not change at all. It depends on the change in theta, you know, the, the angle between these two red planes, but it doesn't depend on the angle itself. It doesn't depend on where this box is, what angle this box is, just the angular thickness of the box. And similarly, the z value. If I change the z value, it doesn't depend on z. It doesn't depend on where the box is vertically. It does depend on its z thickness, that's dz, but it doesn't depend on z. So just from that view, we see that the volume of the box depends on dz, dr, d theta, and also it depends on r, where it's positioned relative to the z-axis. As r changes, the box changes shape and changes volume. This is unlike the rectangular coordinate system, whereas the volume of this rectangular box, so it's trapped between two x values, two y values, two z values, the distance between the two green planes, the two z values, is dz. The distance between the two red planes is uh, dy. The distance between the two gray planes, that's dx. As we move this box around, its shape isn't changing. So it doesn't depend on x. The volume doesn't depend on y. It doesn't depend on z. What it does depend on is the d values, the differentials, the dx, the dy, and the dz. If we shrink the distance between the two, so change dx, dy, or dz, that's the thing that changes the size of the box. So in other words, the volume element for this is just dx times dy times dz. We'd like a similar expression for this volume element. How does it depend on dr, d theta, dz, and r theta and z? So this is shown here, the volume element is given by r dz dr d theta. We sort of knew this already. It was going to depend on d, dz dr d theta, but it also depends on r. Now why is that the expression we get? Well, this cylindrical rectangular box, so we'll call it a rectangular box in cylindrical coordinates. 
what is the volume of this? So that's our dv, our volume element, a small rectangular box. What is our volume? Well, it depends on the area of this cross section and then the height. So it's area, base area, times height. Our base area, well, that's the area of this area element in polar coordinates. So that's r dr d theta. And then what is our height? Our height is dz. So this is r dz dr d theta. And that's what we've got written up here. So there is how our volume element changes when we move to cylindrical coordinates. So that's the only change we have here. There's our volume element in our generic triple integral. If we're going to switch to cylindrical coordinates, so x is r cos theta, y is r sine theta, and z is just itself z, then dv becomes r dz dr d theta. And then we update the x, y, and z values. We've got x is r cos theta, y is r sine theta, and z is just itself. So that's how we switch to cylindrical coordinates in our integral. So let's go ahead and do this for an example. So let's find the volume of the solid, T, that lies below the paraboloid and above one loop of this polar curve. So our region looks like it's our paraboloid. So our paraboloid's opening up. And then we are interested in the region above one loop of this polar curve in the plane. So this we've got one loop that sort of comes out like this. And what happens there is we're looking at, maybe I'll change the color here, we're looking at how it's sitting, how this region is sitting above this curve and below the paraboloid. So that's the object we're trying to compute that volume of. We're going to do a z first integral. If we do a z first integral, then we can do the double integral as a polar integral, an integral over polar coordinates. And that means that we're doing a cylindrical coordinate integral over the whole thing. So our z first integral means we're going to need to figure out what is our footprint. You know, 1b and c, we need to figure out what the sides are, the bottom and the top. And then for question number two, the 2d region, we need to figure out how to deal with that 2d region. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll sketch the footprint. What is our footprint? Well, just for reference, we'll throw x, y, and z on our coordinate axes. So here's x and y. The curve that we are interested in is r equals 2 cos 2 theta. So that's the one we're going to draw here. r is equal to 2 cos 2 theta. And that's going to be this four-leafed flower. It sort of comes in like this. So if you've forgotten how to sketch polar curves, now is a good time to go back and refresh your memory with the Calculus 1 polar coordinates. There's our leaf that we are actually interested in. That's the region in the plane that we are going to integrate over. It's trapped between these two values, which is theta equals negative pi by 4 and theta equals pi by 4. So what is our footprint? Our footprint is one leaf of r equals 2 cos 2 theta. Our sides, what are our sides? Well I've actually drawn them in blue in the diagram. So what is our top and bottom? Maybe that would be good to answer first. We're doing z first z is above 0, but below our paraboloid, x squared plus y squared. 
but in terms of cylindrical coordinates, x squared plus y squared, that's r squared. What are our sides? Our sides are given by r is equal to 2 cos 2 theta. Those are the blue sides there. And then for this arbitrary z value, so it's a set of all r theta z values which satisfy this equation. And again, notice there's no z variable. How do we integrate over the 2D region? Well, that's where we come up with our description of that 2D region in terms of inequalities. We've got that we need r to sweep out that entire region, and theta also has to sweep it out too. Theta is going to go from negative pi by 4 to pi by 4. r is going to go from 0 all the way out to 2 cos 2 theta. And so now we're all set up to write down what our integral is. We are interested in the volume, so v, and that's going to be the triple integral over the region t dv. Since it's a volume, we just integrate over the region of the constant function 1. Now we're going to convert to cylindrical coordinates. And so this is where all of our work above comes into play. So we're going to have three integrals dv, while well, dv for the switch to cylindrical coordinates becomes r, dz, and then we'll go dr d theta for the outer two integrals. z goes over the values from 0 to r squared. That's because of this set of inequalities for the bottom and the top. r is going to go over the values 0 to 2 cos 2 theta, and theta is going to go over the values from negative pi by 4 to pi by 4. And so there's the integral we need to evaluate. We can go ahead and do the integral. We'll do it step by step here, and then I'll indicate how one could finish it off. So we're first integrating with respect to z, and it's of r, so r is a constant, so that would be antiderivative be rz, then we evaluate at r squared and 0, so that becomes just an r cubed. So that becomes an r cubed dr d theta. Now I can't split the theta integral away from the r integral because I've got theta as an upper limit of integration in my inner integral. So we'll have to go ahead and do that inner integral. Antiderivative with respect to r is 1 quarter. And then we've got r to the fourth evaluated from 0 to 2 cos 2 theta d theta. And then this becomes the integral from negative pi by 4 to pi by 4 of 1 quarter. And then 2 to the 4th, that's 16 cos to the 4th, 2 theta, d theta. And so that becomes 4 times the integral from negative pi by 4 to pi by 4 of cos 4, 2 theta, d theta. So we basically boiled our integral down to just this single integral of a single variable. Now this one's a little bit challenging because it's cos to the fourth. Uh, we can go ahead and start to apply identities. We try to reduce that power. So if it was a cos squared, we would try these double angle identities to reduce it down to a single power. Since it's cos to the fourth, we could try that. We'd have a few reductions we'd have to do. We also learned in Calculus 1 a reduction formula for this, how to integrate any cos to the power of n by reducing it to a cosine of a uh, power less than the power you're starting with, and you can keep doing a reduction formula. Or you can take an integral like this. The important part is to notice that this is a challenging integral. So you could take this thing and fire it into uh, a system like Wolfram Alpha to get the value. The point is, we've done the work, we've got to an integral, and an integral we know that is a little bit challenging to work out. So we do what we can to get the value. And in this case, we would probably jump to a computer or go into the section, the appropriate section uh, of calculus one, uh, sorry, calculus two, and use a reduction formula. So however we get it, this will boil down to a value of three pi by four in total. And so I'll maybe say use Wolfram alpha, so WA, or reduction 
formula from calc 2. Again, the main idea here, the new ideas, is not the integrals that we're computing along the way, but the first step is to set them up. And that's where we put the bulk of our effort into, was to set up that integral, getting to this stage right here, setting up that volume integral. And here we used cylindrical coordinates, so we had to make use of the fact that the volume element was r dz dr d theta. All right, that's it for this particular example. Uh, the next video and our last video will do a final example involving cylindrical coordinates. So we'll see you in the next video.